Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is Dark Horse Comics here on Twitch. And uh, we are happy to partner with EA and PopCap today to bring you a special Plants vs. Zombies stream. Um, I am joined today by some of the creators of our Plants vs. Zombies comics. If you didn't know, Dark Horse publishes a whole series of PVZ comics. Um, so with us today is Paul Tobin, who is the writer of the entire series of Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, thanks for joining us, Paul. That's fun. And we also have Kat Ferris and Ron Chan, who are both uh, artists on various volumes of the comics. We actually have some different artists join us on different volumes of the comics. Um, so Ron and Kat have each worked on a few different volumes. Um, thank you so much to both of you for joining us as well. Uh, so we are going to do some Q&A with all of the creators here, and Ron and Kat are also going to show us how they draw and bring these characters to life on the page. Kat's actually going to also show you kind of some of the coloring that she does. Um, Kat, are you using watercolors today? Yeah, I am. Here, I'll scoot this into the frame. Hey, it's my palette. I cleaned it up just for this. <laughs> nice. All right, so I have a few announcements I have to get through um, before we get right into it. So um, as I was saying, we are partnering with EA, who is doing a, um, sorry, I'm getting a little feedback here. Uh, they're doing a stay and play right now, which is um, just an, in an initiative to uh, stay home and play together at a time when we need to be physically apart. Games can be a source of joy and connection. So for many in our community, they already are, and we're highlighting that through content like this, which we can share with you. Um, they have donated some PVZ game codes for us today, which we'll be including in our giveaway. Uh, we'll also be giving away some of our Plants vs. Zombies comics some of which are signed by Paul, who also did some little doodles. So if you would like to enter our giveaway, all you need to do is today during the live stream in the chat, enter the keyword once and only once. And that keyword is use the hashtag symbol and sunflower, hashtag sunflower, S-U-N-F-L-O-W-E-R. And once you do that, you'll be entered in the giveaway. We'll be giving five prize packs of comics and game codes. And with that, I would like to move along to uh, Ron and Kat. Do you mind? Um, we're going to just kind of show you some of the basic characters that you have seen in the games and in the comics. Um, Ron is going to be demonstrating sort of the pencil and ink drawing. And then Kat will be showing you how uh, she colors these. And Paul and I are gonna chat a bit about the comics themselves. And actually most of these questions are for all three of you, if you would like to join in with your answers at any time. And for those of you who are watching at home in the chat, if you would like to ask questions yourselves, please feel free to start asking and our moderators will be pulling those so we can ask the team near the end of our um, first questions. So please go ahead and start asking your cues in the chat now. So for all three of you, um, how did you first get started working on the Plants vs. Zombies comics? Uh, well, I got a call from Philip Simone. He's the editor for all the Plants vs. Zombies comics. And he asked me if I was uh, aware of the game, which at that time only the very first game had come out. Um, and at the exact moment that he called and asked if I was aware of it, I was actually playing the game. So I had to put the game on pause and say, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of Plants vs. Zombies. And he's like, good, write an entire world and create an entire world. So at that time, the, the game was nothing more than just like plants lined up against zombies. So it was kind of fun to create like the entire town of Neighborville and uh, Patrice Blazing, the um, on Crazy Dave's niece and her friend. Uh, Nate Timely, and just uh, create the world and, and see where they were. And Ron and Kat, did you have any particular, um, like, had you been playing the game? Uh, how, did, how did you get drawn into uh, working on the comics yourselves? 
So I, I had played the game um, when it first came out for Steam before it became the uh, iPad sensation that it ended up being. Um, I played um, it extremely thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the way I got involved with the project was because um, Philip, Simone, as, as Paul mentioned him earlier, he's the editor on the project. Philip had been, he was familiar with my art from other Dark Horse projects, and he had been meaning to try to get me on a project with him. And when it all came together was actually at a Halloween party of um, fellow cartoonist Paul Guinan. Paul Guinan has been, had, had been hosting uh, Halloween parties every year that he invited a lot of uh, cartoonists to. And Philip saw me there, and I was wearing a pea shooter costume. And so that's when it all connected for Philip, who's like, guy I want to work with, definitely familiar with the project. <laughs> Did he uh, compliment you on this costume? Was it homemade? It was homemade. I mean, it wasn't much of a costume, to be honest. It was... <laughs> It was a green ball cap that I used some, that I crafted a snout onto with a fuck with some foam and a little ball at the end that I painted green, and and then it was just the rest of it was just green clothes I happened to own. It's pretty <laughs> awesome though. You can see the picture of it in like some of the early Plants vs Zombies trades and yeah, yeah, in all the um, the back about the author sections and I believe the photo we used for me is a picture of me in that costume. Uh, definitely look for that. If I had it here, I would show it, but um, we'll have to do some research. <laughs> How about you, Kat? Did you also have a costume? <laughs> no, I didn't have a costume. Um, I didn't come on to Plants vs. Zombies until a lot later after like Ron and Paul had done quite a bit and some of the other, other artists had uh, done a lot of work. Um, but sometimes Ron gets busy and he doesn't always have time to draw uh, the PVZ volumes, so they need other people. And I was a pretty convenient choice uh, for being a cartoonist who was familiar with Plants vs. Zombies and uh, hangs out with this guy who knows everything about the comics universe. So it was kind of a, like a natural fit to just, oh, well, I have some time and I'd love to work on the franchise because I've been watching Ron do it for several years at that point. I was like, oh, that looks like it's fun. Yeah, sure. I'd love to you know, draw my own book. That sounds like a good challenge. That's awesome. Well, everybody has done a great job. And honestly, um, it's I'm sure it's kind of difficult to draw an existing property when you have when there's kind of an established way that things usually look. But I think everybody's art styles work so well with the different Plants vs. Zombies volumes. Um, those of you who are watching along with us, if you haven't picked up the comics yet, there are 16 volumes out now. Um, we just had volume 16 come out a little early, actually. So that's available at comic shops and bookstores right now. Um, it's called The Garden Path. Um, and they are all extremely fun. Each book is its own adventure. Um, I can't recommend them highly enough. They're great for ages eight and up, I would say. Or, you know, a little younger if maybe um, parents or guardians are reading along with the kids, too. So oh, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Definitely look for those. Um, I know... As we're all social distancing and staying home right now, it is a little bit more challenging to get out to a comic shop, but uh, we recommend looking at comicshoplocator.com to see which ones are near you, and then you can check with them um, to find out what their hours and delivery options are right now. A lot of shops are offering um, online orders and pickup and things like that, bookstores too. Um, and if you want to look for local bookstores, indiebound.org is a great website for that. Um, so back to you all, team. Do you have any favorite characters in the comics, um, whether to draw or just that you enjoy? Uh, I love them all because I get to make them say things. So if I didn't <laughs> love them, they wouldn't be speaking. So anybody that's on the page, I'd probably love. But um, I like probably Zomboss the most just because he's um, his constant failure is kind of funny to me. Um, but with his like zombie optimism, I like that. Um, I like Mr. Stubbins, the little zombie hedgehog, um, and I have all sorts of little uh, like side notes in my head of what he's really doing and, and his real motives, and that's kind of fun to 
kind of do and give hints on. And uh, and then like a lot of the uh, Nigel Nigel Blintbottom is a zombie that I really like. Um, I like Patrice and, and Nate, of course. So I, I like them all. It's a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of Chestbeard. <laughs> I was very excited when he featured prominently in my uh, volume of PVZ. I was like, yes, I get to draw just beard. Awesome. He's I, just so funny. I put him in literally two panels in the one I'm working on right now just because I'm like, oh, I feel like doing chest beard. So he just kind of wanders through and waves, and that's just it. But he's <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I love drawing Zomboss. Anytime he gets to make extremely exaggerated facial expressions, which he's very good at. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite plant to draw is probably bok choy, because um, he gets to punch things. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just love I love drawing the kids, named Patrice. I invented Grau Grau the ultimate face puncher, and then he's one of my favorite characters too, but he's my least favorite character to type in a script because I'm like, why did I spell it like this? And I have to type it again and again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, are there any least favorites um, that are maybe more difficult to draw for you two, Ron and Kat? Mm. Citron maybe? I, uh, I, I do not like drawing Citron because he is <laughs> very complex and has lots of doodads on him. Um, and I don't particularly like drawing football zombie because the helmet is challenging. Yeah, the helmet's no good. Really? I knew it. I didn't know that. Um, you know, the football helmet, it's got the, the little grate in the front. Oh, and yeah, it's the face ran around that face grate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that can be uh, annoying to draw. But sometimes, you know, Sometimes you just need a football zombie, so I do anyways. Uh, and I will say that uh, any of the sort of the, it doesn't really come up a lot for me because I draw the more of the core books, not the Garden Warfare books. Um, but the more complex Garden Warfare zombie designs look very challenging. <laughs> yeah, I would not want to be drawing those if I could help it. <laughs> Well, although in-person conventions and events are canceled or postponed for now, um, so this, what we're doing here today, is a little bit similar to the live drawing that we sometimes feature at our Comic-Con booth. Uh, Ron and Kat joined us last year at San Diego for live drawing of some of these Plants vs. Zombies and other EA game characters. Um, can you tell us more about what artwork you did last year and uh, what games that they were from and kind of like what that was like for you? Um, well, I only did one piece and mine was Mass Effect. So they basically wrote and said like, here's a list of properties, pick what you want. Um, of course I picked Mass Effect because I really love Mass Effect quite a bit and uh, they gave me pretty free reign. So I picked two of my favorite characters, uh, Grunt and Rex, the Krogans and uh, paired them up with Commander Shepard. And the piece was basically them doing a spicy noodle bowl heist. And it's uh, Grunt and Rex uh, with Shepard on their shoulders. And they've got just like tons of bowls filled with spicy noodles and they're like running through town. <laughs> that was, it was really fun. It was really challenging because I think the piece of paper, well, paper, piece of canvas I had to work on was 60 inches by 60 inches. Was that right? Yeah. And uh, so it was easily the biggest piece I've done outside of art school. Uh, and then to have to do it over the course of eight hours on the convention floor with a whole bunch of people just walking by and watching me all day long was uh, also very challenging. But after you've been up there for like an hour and I got everything laid out, it was, uh, it was really enjoyable. I had a good time. I was able to relax. I got to talk to random passers-by. Uh, lots of kids really enjoyed it. You'd every once in a while just like hear from behind you some kid being like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. This is awesome. And I was like, yay, I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like a lot of people really enjoyed it every time. It was kind of on the corner of our booth last year. Um, so people could walk up to it from two different sides. And every time I came by, there were always people watching and interacting with you. 
Um, Ron, did, did you do two pieces last year? Is that right? Yeah, I did two pieces. So yeah, we you know when we talked about kicking the project off, we had our choice of any basically any like current EA property. Um, but since uh, of course I am the main TVZ artist and also a huge uh, Mass Effect fan, I did one piece that was just Plants vs Zombies, a big collection of of them all fighting each other. And then a second one that was a PBZ and Mass Effect uh, mashup. Those are really sweet. They were super complicated looking. They were fairly <laughs> complex, yes. Yeah. Kat, I never saw yours. You have to send it, if you have a photo, send it to me sometime. Oh, I will, yeah. I think actually um, I just got a letter from uh, I think Angela at uh, EA and she said that they put all of our pieces up on their website for people to look at. So I will I will find that link at some point and send it along. Oh yeah, yeah. I will ask about that too. We would definitely love to share those. Sweet, yeah, I will I will look it up because I just received the email maybe two or three days ago. So pretty recent development. Cool. That's great, yeah. A lot of people were asking uh, what would become of those. So that'll be fun to show off for sure. I think they got auctioned off or no, they didn't get auctioned in the end, but they made a sizable donation to the Australian Fire Relief. Uh -huh. Oh, good, good. That's great. Yeah, I knew they were interested in doing something with charity, but I hadn't heard an update yet. So that's very cool. Um, well, so I had another question for Paul, especially. Um, which characters are unique to the comics um, that do not necessarily appear in the games? And could you tell us a little bit more about them? Oh, well... Uh, Nate, it may be a lot. <laughs> yeah. There's Nate Timely, who's a, a young boy who um, is very energetic and um, a little confused sometimes. He, he likes adventure. I kind of pattern him after me. Um, I was a young boy who, like, as long as something seemed cool, I would do it. And if that meant, you know, falling off a cliff, then I would fall fall off the cliff. I would have definitely fought zombies. That would have been great. I grew up in the, in the um, middle of Iowa, and if there had been a zombie invasion, I would have been set. Uh, and then there's Patrice Blazing, who's uh, his friend and also uh, Crazy Dave's niece. And um, she's the only person on Earth that can actually understand Crazy Dave. Um, she understands and she translates for other people. Um, but the plants understand Crazy Dave, too, that I shouldn't say. Um, then there's Mr. Stubbins, but I think he's going to end up in the games where we keep trying. Um, he's a little zombie hedgehog who um, has his own little dreams and that uh, Zomboss stole from an old college buddy. Um, I forget that he wasn't Zombosses to begin with, that he was stolen at in in the plot of one of our books. <laughs> There's not the one where that kind of uh, boomerangs on poor Zomboss. So, yeah. Um, and then uh, there's zombies, like uh, there's a trio of zombies, Nigel Blimpbottom, Tugboat, and Frog Pants. Uh, they're all confused, but they're the most intelligent zombies. Nigel can actually say his name. He can say Nigel, which puts him, you know, miles above the normal zombie who can only say brains. Um, and Tugboat can say his own name, too. And uh, Frog Pants just wears frog pattern pants because I think saying frog pants is funny, so I made a character. Well, Frog Pants can say his own name too, right? Yeah. Oh, he can say it. Yeah, he, he like Frog Pants. Yeah, he's it's a struggle for him. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't. Yeah, I should give him his props. Sorry, Frog Pants. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's a bunch of like animals. Uh, uh, there's a frog that can belch really hard because I'm like 12 years old in my head and like belching frogs. <laughs> I grew up next to a marsh, and there were always frogs just like going just croaking at just incredible volume um, <laughs> so i guess that worked into my subconscious but yeah we're trying to make a lot more name characters too because it's fun to have like not just a horde of zombies but a horde of known zombies um it gives a little more character and a little more depth because for like a couple of years it was just zomboss and the zombies but it's more fun to have zomboss and his friends um zomboss is still you know completely the leader um although Mr. Stubbins would deny that. But, but um, yeah, so we're, we're getting a lot more characters. 
And we're starting to talk about crossover with the games too, to work some of there. Uh, we do have a question from the chat about some characters. Uh, they're wondering, are Captain Chestbeard and Deadbeard a rival pair? Um, I don't write them as rivals, but there's no reason to say that they're friends. Uh, I could, <laughs> I I keep wanting to do more pirate stuff, but you can only do pirate stuff so much. But yeah, a big pirate pirate battle would be kind of kind of fun. Um, Chestbeard anymore is just kind of a, a he just kind of likes hanging out. Um, I don't have him sailing around as much. He's a, a land blubber to a certain degree right now. But yeah, man, a big battle to get him back on the in the seas would be kind of fun. Uh, we have actually have several questions for you about writing now, Paul. Which was your favorite book to write, if such exists? Um, this new one that came out, they're all, I love them all. I mean, that's why I wrote them. But the new one that came out was kind of fun because uh, each part has an ending. So it's like you can like read a thing and then make your choice to like which you choose like oh take uncle dave or crazy dave's advice or take patrice's advice and then turn to a certain page and that story will play out and the reason that was really fun for me is because in some of them finally i can let the zombies win it's yeah. the, you know the bad ending or the if you're if you're in favor of the zombies then it's the good ending but um but um, yeah, it was fun to write little sections of stories where where Zomboss wins. He he takes over the town, and there's no like, there's no. And then Crazy Dave does this. It's like no, Zomboss wins in this ending, and that that was a lot of fun to write. I felt like Zomboss was sitting next to me with his hand around my shoulder, saying, "Thanks for giving me one, Paul. I appreciate it." <laughs> uh, there is a question about the zombies. In fact. Um, why do you think there has not been a revolution against Zomboss at this point? Um, we've done like many revolutions and, and it's always on my mind, but um, a revolution sort of needs organization and <laughs> zombies you know, aren't the best at organization. And in fact, the person they look to to organization is Zomboss himself. So um, yeah, revolution is kind of hard to foster in, unless you can group together. The zombies mostly just, to me, want brains and to have Zomboss leave them alone. So they're not really going to do an uprising. There were his buddies at Zombie College who, you know, at least had Zomboss captured momentarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Stilts and Greg Gonchoir, um, they're, they come back in some new stuff. And, and Stilts has his own little... Stilts is a, a, a z zombie imp, imp on Stilts. And he has his own dreams. Um, they're the only other zombies we've had that can actually talk to. Oh, we're getting a lot of interesting questions so far. Um, <clears throat> somebody was asking if, uh, let's see, how do you get the comics from the page to the digital version? That's actually more one that the Dark Horse team can answer. Uh, I don't work on the digital comics, but we have a team who does. Um, they will, so we receive all of the great art from folks like Ron and Kat, um, and then that may arrive in various forms. And basically we have a whole team of folks who work in the offices behind the scenes, and uh, they're the ones who will put the print books together. And then we have all these digital files that our digital team makes into the digital comics, which end up on Dark Horse Digital and Comixology and all those places, which is another great option right now while everybody is staying at home too. Actually, all of our digital comics are 50% off during this whole quarantine situation to kind of give you an extra ease into something to do while we're staying home. Um, so, Ron and Kat, do you mind telling us a little bit about what you are working on right now? Uh, well, I don't know what Ron's doing, but <laughs> I uh, just got handed his lovely finished inked piece, and now I am slowly filling it in with watercolor, so it is colorful. Yeah, I, you know, I, I just started doodling while we were talking, <laughs> and uh, this is something that I'm fairly comfortable with. Since I've drawn these characters so many times, it's pretty easy for me to just start stacking plants. Um, <laughs> so I do that just just for funsies. And now Kat is 
Plowing it in, and now I'm going to draw a little Zomboss. Do you, all of you, have any uh, favorite scenes or moments from the comics? Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> Broad question. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I maybe the introduction of, well, not so much the introduction of Mr. Stubbins, but when, when I decided Zomboss would steal him, I kind of liked that because... Mr. Stubbins was just going to be a little one-off little character that was um, Greg Ganchoir's pet. Um, but everybody loved him so much, I'm like, oh, and including me, um, that I'm like, nope, he's a regular character now. So uh, maybe when he first started, like, coming into his own, I like that a lot. Yeah, I've made no secret that Mr. Stubbins is my favorite <laughs> character as well. So on behalf of Team Stubbins, thank you for more <laughs> of that. Um. You know, I like drawing. I like drawing any of the action scenes. Are always fun. They, they can get very complex to draw, but it's always fun drawing uh, the melee chaos. Um, I like drawing Bong Choy punching zombies a lot. Uh, I also like drawing. Uh, Patrice has done quite a bit of hand-to-hand -hand combat with the zombies too, and you know, I like this because I'm a big. Uh, old like Street Fighter fan. I like to sneak in just a few, a few Street Fighter moves in there for them to do. <laughs> you tweeted that one time about me putting in more suplexes, and then I just did. I filled an issue with suplexes so you could draw them. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that was great. That was a very good moment. Paul had tweeted out. I think it was a picture of a baby uh, looking at itself in the mirror, and then it grabs the mirror, and the mirror falls on the baby. And I said that to me, it looked more like the baby intentionally suplexed the mirror, <laughs> which spun out of control into a tweet of, of me asking him to write suplexes into the comic. And then it happened. And then it's pirates <laughs> suplexing right and left. It was a lot of fun. I think there was a scene in our book where, oh my gosh, what was it? I don't remember everyone that was playing poker, but there was a orca playing poker, but wearing like a giant astronaut type water helmet so it could continue to breathe. Um, that was great. I had a good time drawing that. It was, I love getting the really nonsensical stuff. There was a duck in opera clothes. I got to draw the pirates wearing uh, like David Bowie-esque super groovy 70s outfits that was really rad like paul sent me reference for that and i was just like flipping through it and like, yes yes look at all these great outfits look at all this chest hair it was so fun <laughs> anything that's absurd like it is really just super fun to draw these comics i think are full of those fun little absurdities um and you all do an excellent job with it i was just re-looking through um a couple of different volumes that I have at home, and uh, I like the pizza map, for example, from A Little Problem. Yeah. Um, another question from the chat is, how much control or how involved are PopCap and EA in the comics? Um, I pretty much get free reign. Um, I send in ideas, like springboard ideas of I'd like to do this, and for the most part, they, they just give me a thumbs up. and. Um, I send the script to them in stages, but like the last script came back with a couple of like two notes. Um, so I pretty much get to do what I want. I mean, much of the world I invented myself. Um, and sometimes they'll say things like, oh, you know, can you stress this character a little more? Or um, there's a couple of characters that I like that they're like, well, they're not much in the game. So maybe step, you know, step back a little on them. Um, but for the most part, I just get to do whatever I want and be as absurd as I want. And as long as I'm not like changing the characters or, or, um, you know, stepping on the, you know, the main tenets of the game, then I get to do what I want. Yeah. I've, I've found they're very easy to work with just all around. Um, they've been very supportive of this stream today, which is great. Um, and if you haven't entered the giveaway, just a reminder that that is still open. We have drawn two winners, and there will be three more who can win both game codes from PopCap and also some copies of our Plants vs. Zombies comics, um, including brand new Volume 16, which just came out a little early. Um, so that's available now. 
Um, we're also getting several questions about uh, the new wizard class, and people are wondering whether that might appear in the comics in the future. I don't know if we know that yet. Do Have you heard anything about that, Paul? I have not heard anything about that as far as moving it in. I mean, I wouldn't be against it. I, I like a good wizard, so yeah, okay. I'll, I'll move them in. Characters are fun to play with, so, you know, I'll start thinking of, like, specific wizard names and things like that. So it could happen, yeah, but I can't say for sure. Yeah. I would. I think a wizard would be fun in the comics for sure. Um, so Ron is kind of showing you all how he draws some of the main characters if there is anything you at home are interested in seeing him draw or cat to color, um, please feel free to drop that in the chat as well. Um, they may be able to show you how they do a certain character if you're curious um, to kind of see it in action. And if you at home are also drawing any PVZ characters, we would love to see your art too. If you want to share it with us on any social media or if um, you're younger and you have maybe your parents with you, please feel free to ask them if they might share it with us, if it's okay. And uh, if you tag Dark Horse Comics or Plants vs. Zombies, um, we'll be on the lookout for that and we'll, we'll share some of your art later on today too. Um, let's see. I'm looking at the chat right now for any of those drawing requests. Um, Snapdragon is coming through. Ooh. So that might be something Ron can do once he finishes up this guy. Um, I had another question for you all. Meanwhile, if the PVZ characters had to quarantine, like we are right now, uh, how do you think they would pass the time? Well, clearly Crazy Dave is going to invent at least five or six crazy things that may or may not help with anything at all. I mean, I'm not convinced Crazy Dave isn't sort of in quarantine mode all the time anyways. Absolutely. So I don't think it would have a huge effect on how he spends his time. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate, probably video games and pizza. Patrice, ooh, Patrice would be a hard one. She likes the outside a little too much. Um, she'd probably build a fort on top of the house and kind of hang out there. Zomboss would just be a nuisance to everybody. The zombies would absolutely break quarantine. Yes. They, they absolutely <laughs> would. Just wandering around in the streets. Fair enough. Oh, we're also getting requests uh, if you can draw some gnomes. And possibly, if you feel so inclined, uh, maybe drawing a wizard just for fun. Uh, I will have to look up what this wizard looks like because I've never <laughs> seen it. But I can give it a shot after I do some of the other ones. Oh, and we've also got a request, uh, Ron and Kat, if you would be able to, after the stream today, if you would share the finished art that you're working on on your social media afterwards, sure. people would love to see it. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, do you mind, uh, and we can drop this in the chat later too, but can you tell folks uh, which platforms you're on and what your handles are so they can look for you? Sure. Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, and I have the same handle on both. It's at Catifer, C-A-T-T-I-F-E-R. Drop that in the chat. And I am also on Twitter and Instagram, uh, I, and I guess Tumblr. I don't post it as much, but I, they're all under the same handle, which is uh, Ron Dan Chan, R O N D A N C H A N. Perfect. And Paul, you are on Twitter, right? Are you on any other social media? Uh, not really. I do Tumblr, but just for like, I share original art of other comics that I like, so. Social media, Twitter is pretty much it for me. I'll drop that in the chat as well. All right, so Ron, are you? Which one are you working on now? I am going to draw a Snapdragon. Nice. There's your Snapdragon for you, chat. Um, keep on entering the giveaway if you would like to win game codes and comics. We have just drawn a third winner, which means there are two more to go. 
And so as we're drawing and coloring, and then obviously you can play Plants vs. Zombies uh, while we are at home and uh, quarantining or self-isolating, um, do any of you have ideas for other crafts or games or things that people could do at home with the PVZ theme? Um, I was thinking about maybe, you know, you could write your own PVZ stories. Good. You could even, <clears throat> excuse me, you could even make your own PVZ comics at home. Don't have to wait for us to create content. If you have paper, pencil, markers, colored pencil, crayons, whatever, like you can draw your own stuff. Yeah, I get I get people sending like their own comics to me all the time, and it's always kind of fun to see, uh, like little adventures and Zomboss Triumphant is a is a common theme in the comics that gets sent to me, which I kind of like. Um, so yeah, you can just make your own comics and and create your own characters and things like that, and that's that's a lot of fun. And as Kat said, like you don't you don't need much more than a pencil and paper, and you know don't write on walls because you yeah don't do that. Your parents will get really mad. But just grab some paper and, and go. Uh, I think you should eat more vegetables. <laughs> but the There's plants I'm here. <laughs> I, contextually, I guess eating the plants might seem weird, but they're that sounds terrible. Good for you. <laughs> Ron has just been bought out by Big Broccoli, so um. nobody listening. <laughs> I do love the idea that the, one of the most popular fan fanfic topics is Zomboss actually getting to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it all the time. Like half the half, it officially. Like, we have to officially have the good guys win. Mm -hmm. But you know, I like it that somewhere out there, ZB is getting a W. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> That actually lends itself really well to the next question I have from chat, which is, are you team zombies or team plants? Well, I, as the writer, I have to play both sides because when I'm writing Zomboss, he wants to win. And when I'm writing Crazy Dave and the, and the kids and the plants, they, they want to win. So I, I'm a neutral party. Um, but yeah, Zom, Zomboss kind of has to lose in the end. And, and uh, I feel 50% bad about that. <laughs> So I'm sorry to toe the line, but like I, I sort of have to. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, when I was writing Garden Path and there were some, some of the particular endings had Zomboss winning, it, it felt good. It felt good. I do love Zomboss with all my heart. He is precious. But if I had to pick a team, and you do, for instance, if you play like... <laughs> Battle for Neighborville, I am Team Plants. I, I, I like playing in the plants a lot more. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to agree with Ron on that one. I love Zomboss very much as well. He is so great, but also I would definitely have to call Team Plants. I feel like Zomboss is watching this and feeling good that we all like him, but then he's like, but we want you to lose, Zomboss. He's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, oh. friend. <laughs> it's more funny that way. Yeah. Unfortunately for Zomboss. Mm -hmm. Well, if we let Zomboss totally win, then that's sort of game over, comic over. That's true, yeah. We wouldn't have anywhere else to go because everyone would be zombies and it would just be zombies versus yeah. zombies. <laughs> zombies <laughs> just walking around yeah. for 72 pages. Oh, boy. At least the letterer would have an easy job. All they have to type is brains. Yep. Oh, here's an interesting question. <clears throat> uh, do you have any favorites of the new characters introduced um, recently? Electric Slide, 80s Action Hero, Space Cadet, Acorn, Nightcap, for example. Nightcap, definitely Nightcap. Yeah, I like I like Night Nightcap too. I can I'm thinking of Ron drawing Space Cadet, and that's like a, Space Cadet was hard. Like the, I wrote a Garden Warfare where we used the character a lot, and um, Space Cadet fills a panel, <laughs> so it's hard to have interaction sometimes with Space Cadet. Um, but um, I'm a big fan of roller skates, so Electric Slide is there for me too. And, and um, I don't, I kind of like them all. I mean, they're designed to be fun, and they are fun. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, how hard was it to strike a balance of wacky and zombie horror for Team Zombies? Um, I don't know. It, hopefully I do strike that balance. Uh, that's one of the pushbacks I get sometimes from PopCap of this scene is a little bit too scary. Um, so then I have to pull back there. Um, I keep it pretty wacky for the most part. Um, we don't want a true horror comic by any means. And it's, it's sometimes tough to toe that line because the zombies are fun and wacky and things like that. But, you know, they kind of do want to eat your brains, which is problematic. Yes. So, yeah, I sometimes when I push a little too far, Pop Cap will push back and then I have a little more of a grounding I definitely did get a note when I first started drawing uh, Zomboss in my volume. Uh, I made his hands too gnarly. And I think the exact quote was, there's a little bit too much zombie realness. Mm. And I needed to clean up his fingernails and like take some of the, the knuckles out of his hands um, on some of those close-up shots. Cause it was just, it was looking too zombie. And they were like, ah, this is not for children. And I was like, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've definitely gotten a few notes where, like, I've drawn, like, a, a really sad walnut getting eaten, and they've said, okay, I mean, we know that's his thing, but he looks just a little bit too distressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a lot of people love gnomes in the chat, it looks like. Um, <clears throat> maybe that'll be next. We'll see. We'll see what Ron draws after the Snapdragon. I've never drawn as a gnome. I don't know. There are gnomes. This is drawn the gnome. Cracks in my facade show up. I can. I mean, I can do it. I can. I can fake it. <laughs> well, here's here's a, another request that uh, sounds fun. Uh, can you draw Deadbeard and the Wizard again? We'll have to look up what the Wizard looks like. I think, but uh, doing whatever old men like to do. <laughs> Sit on a porch and. <laughs> uh, uh, what zombie or plant uh, have you most enjoyed drawing lately? Uh, I mean, that's pretty much the same as my lately is the same as always. You know, <laughs> I, I, I like drawing bong choy punching zombies a lot. I like drawing anytime Zomboss gets to be really emotive with his face. Um. You know, and any sort of just silly hijinks. I like drawing tall nuts with a single tear. <laughs> They're so stoic, and it always like makes me so sad slash so happy to see them just like holding the line with their little sad tear. It's like, no, I must be strong. <laughs> uh, let's see. What other questions have we got for you all? Uh, do we work on the PVZ games? Uh, no, none of us here actually work on the games. We all, I work for Dark Horse and Ron, Kat, and Paul, all are comics creators or artists and writers. So um, Paul actually works on a lot of comics with us at Dark Horse. Yes. Um, Paul has how, many, how many different series do you work on with just Dark Horse, Paul? Can you even count? <laughs> No, I've kind of lost count. I actually do consult on the games, too. They've flown me up a couple of times to to um, work on the games, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not sure how many comics I do for Dark Horse. A lot. A lot, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we can't really answer any specific questions about the games, but any other comments or questions you have about the comics, rather, um, please feel free to drop those in the chat. We're going to keep an eye on those until about 1 p.m. Um, let's see. Uh, when we were talking earlier about the zombie revolution possibility, somebody suggested that uh, maybe could the plants help the zombies with a revolution against Zomboss? Every time I've had like a plot that's anywhere close to like the team up between plants versus zombies that that gets pushed back on me um because they want you know plants versus zombies so there have been times when i'm like the kids have felt bad for the zombies and have tried to help them do something or the or something like that and we try to stay away from that and they're, they are they're against each other um i don't really think they dislike each other as much at times and times they can see the you know there's not like 
I want to beat them. It's just we want to stop them from doing this. But as far as actually teaming up, we try to stay away from that. Uh, Paul, this might not be something uh, we know for sure yet, but folks are also curious whether there will be some more Garden Warfare comics. Um, it's not impossible. I can say that. I can't. Uh, I can't like cement an answer. But yeah, we we enjoy doing them. I can say that. A lot of folks now uh, we're talking about the anti-bully squad and how much they loved that. Um, that's another thing that they might like to see you draw to Ron, if if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys come back in a in an upcoming graphic novel, so I like them too. Let's see. Uh, can we see Fred and the Primal Sunflower Giant again? That one I'm not sure that's about. A, that's a, a good callback. That's way long ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Um, yeah, all characters that I enjoy might cycle back because it's it's fun to, to revisit characters. So, yeah, yeah, definitely could happen. Exciting task of waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> I really like it. It turned out really well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I got my good watercolor palette out today. Lots of fun cartoony colors in this one. <clears throat> the purple of the mushroom kind of brings it all together. Yeah, that mushroom is good to pop in there because most of the plants are like green or brown or yellow. There aren't a lot of like really different colored ones with a couple of exceptions, but that purple is really nice. I like the potato. The potato mine is like one of the hardest characters to to write. Like Cherry Bomb is another one because like their purpose is sort of to blow up. So <laughs> yeah. it's kind of hard to have them in the comics to a certain degree. Yeah. Although there's a, I'm not sure if he's actually appeared yet, but there's a there's a named Potato Mine now. There's, oh, is there? Uh, yeah, Edgar Allan Potato Mine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, question for Paul. What kind of plant do you want to see brought into the comic series? I think that's maybe from the game. Hmm. Well, I don't know. There's so many. And I kind of like using the basic plants to a certain degree. Um, I mean, PopCap also likes us to, well, they like multiple types of plants sprinkled in. They like sort of the main cast to be more like sort of what they consider the core. core yeah. Um, I don't know. That's when I'd have to think longer than we have, actually. Uh, Paul, how how is it? Uh, look, what, how does your process differ, I guess, um, when you are working on PVZ comics or some of your other comics for younger readers? Um, <laughs> versus working on some of your other, maybe like more horror comics that you've done um, for more of an adult audience? Um, I don't know that the process differs that much at all. I mean, I just give myself different guidelines and different boxes to work in, but the actual process is pretty much the same. And really, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's all ages or some of my horror or even my novels, things like that, uh, the main thing that I'm trying to do is is make myself happy. I try to like really enjoy what I'm doing. So as long as I'm doing that, as long as it's like, like if it's horror, as long as I'm creeping myself out, that works. If it's all ages, if it's a little more wackier and absurd, um, my process is pretty much the same as do I like this? <laughs> Is it difficult to uh, kind of switching gears? Are you often working on more than one of these, uh, like an, a young adult series and a, a more adult series at the same time? Yeah, I usually like um, work on probably three or four different projects a day. I usually have like seven, eight, or even more going at a time. And it, it used to be that it would take me a long time to um, like, I couldn't work on more than one thing really a day. Um, but now I can switch back and forth pretty easily. As long as I, like the first part of working on any project during a day is looking at what I've done and then I sort of build that momentum again and kind of can see where I was at. And that's really important. I know I know creators that don't, that can just sit down and pick up, 
pick up from where they were the day before. And I can't do that. I need to revise and and um, kind of remember what I was doing first. But as long as I do that, it doesn't matter if I pop from project to project. Mm. You are you're a very busy writer. Mm -hmm. Uh, one more question from the chat for the whole team. Um, do you think Pea Shooter or Sunflower are the mascot for the plant team? Oh, that's a tough one. Like, I just think of them both simultaneously when I think about it. Uh, but I like Pea Shooter a little bit more, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it's Pea Shooter, just, you know. I mean, Sunflower is necessary. You literally cannot succeed without Sunflower. I, I, I do think that the PBZ pea shooter is the most iconic of all PBZ plants. I, I agree completely with Ron there. And I, I like the, I try to make sure to work sunflowers in the game or in the comics and um, because you, you do need them. And I actually like their sort of undying bright smiles and things like that. But um, for me, pea shooter is the, the icon. Ooh, we're seeing a lot of chatter about uh, Zombots now. Are there any plans to include more Zombots in the comics? Uh, not current plans. It's not something I'm against, but I, I do try to keep towards like the core plants and the core zombies to a certain degree, and then the group that we've done. And once you start to like move it into robotics, it's easy to delve too far into that. Um, but I do like occasional giant robot, you know, battle and things like that. So. Yeah, there's there's some bots now and then. Who doesn't love a giant robot battle? The uh, the the robot dinosaur that we had in Dino Might was a lot of fun to draw, and was loosely based. It, the shape of it was loosely based on a monster uh, from Monster Hunter. Oh, really? Because I like to work in just lots of little. Little pop culture references. <laughs> are there any other uh, characters that are kind of based on, even loosely, other characters or maybe like animals in, in real life or anything like that? Um, There's a lot of little cameos I, I sneak in, um, especially in the Halloween in, uh, in Lawn of Doom where a lot of, uh, we have a lot of civilians that are in Halloween costumes. A lot of them, those were like uh, references to real world things. Uh, Paul and his wife, Colleen, they have a character named Bandette, and one of the kids was dressed as Bandette. I had a character who was dressed as singer Janelle Monet. There was a character, there was a background character dressed as a, in Hamilton costume. Yeah, you got a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. That's good. I am not surprised that you worked in a Hamilton reference. Had to be done. <laughs> well, we are starting to close in on the okay. one o'clock hour here. Um, so we can take probably a few more questions. And it looks like Ron is kind of finishing up this current drawing. Um, we have one more giveaway winner yet to draw, which we will do right at about 1 p.m. So remember, uh, if you haven't yet, enter the code word sunflower in the chat with the little hashtag or pound sign and uh you are entered in the drawing once and only once please look at those beautiful watercolors thank you that was really really fun to do <laughs> i really do like that purple i think that really pops against the the greens and browns good design choice <laughs> And everybody at home, also just a reminder, if you too are drawing uh, some PVZ characters at home, or maybe you're trying out your own PVZ comics, we would love to see those if you want to share them. Um, please feel free to tag Dark Horse Comics or Plants vs. Zombies, and we will look for those and maybe share some of those on social media too. Um, let's see, any final questions? Ooh, look at that wizard. I like that wizard. That's a good wizard. Wizard. It's pretty cool. It's the first time I've ever seen him. <laughs> but he's pretty cool. I'll definitely try to get him in the comic. I like the Snapdragon and the wizard together. Very, very fitting choice. Mm -hmm. All right. Coming up on that final giveaway winner. Just a couple more minutes here. I want to start Zomboss, but I don't know if there's time. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm going to share some compliments with you all. I love Ron's style. It is very good. And Kat's coloring is very nice. I love watercolor. Oh, yeah, Thank me you. too. Thank you. <laughs> And yeah, another another request to share these later on your Instagram or Twitters. Yeah, we'll share nice images of them on our social media. We just got a really good scanner, so we can actually take nice scans. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's that's part of that process to digital somebody was asking about earlier too, is we often will get the original art from the team and then that gets scanned in and then our um, our digital art team works with those files and kind of puts the books together. Yeah. Um, so it's a whole... A whole long process that takes a lot of a lot of hands even after we get um, the finished art from the art team which includes like Ron was just doing pencils and inks and then Kat was showing coloring we also have a letterer who comes in and adds all the speech bubbles and all of that good stuff um, some of them also design the logo type that you see on the covers um, so letterers are super important also and of course Paul's scripts are kind of what kicks the whole thing off so we have everybody from writers to all different uh, parts of the art team to letterers and then it comes to us where it all gets uh, turned into a comic behind the scenes um so yeah we're coming up on one o'clock here thank you so much to paul ron and kat for joining us today um thanks everybody at home for tuning in uh, we wanted to offer you a little something uh while we're all at home um, obviously we're all at home too with yeah. our various setups here. So, uh, thanks again for joining us. I'm going to draw that last giveaway winner right now. And there they are. Um, all five winners are announced in the chat and we will whisper you if we don't get a whisper from you today. That's basically a private message here on Twitch. So look for that if you were drawn as a winner. Um, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. I think we are going to sign off for the day. But before we go, um, would you all like to tell us a little bit about what other projects you're working on and where people can find those? Um, I'm working on an uh, all-ages book called Bandette, um, which is a story of a teen thief. I work on that with uh, my wife, Colleen Coover. Uh, Ron Chan and I are doing an upcoming graphic novel called Earth Boy. It's about a young boy who's the first boy from Earth to join the Galactic Rangers, but um, he's disappointed to find out the real reason they, they let him join. Um, I'm doing a book called Rassel Castle, which is upcoming as well. Um, it's about a young girl who needs to get her, her um, brother out of prison in a world of wrestling. Uh, those are probably pretty much the all ages things that I'm doing. So I'll pass it on to Ron and Kat now. Um, as Paul said, yeah, he and I are working on a script together uh, on, on a story called Earth Boy. And uh, he's finished the script and I am I'm making my way through the artwork and it, it should come out sometime uh, probably middle to late next year. I'm thinking probably we, it's not set in stone yet. I've also done I've done some covers for Dark Horse for various uh, Stranger Things books and those are always fun to work on and uh yeah that's pretty much it for me uh i just finished uh final art for uh, an all ages horror book that i'm working on uh with writer cullen bunn who generally does a lot more adult stuff but he wanted to do a more all ages sort of thing so uh we collaborated on a horror book together and it's called the ghoul next door and it's going to be coming out from whatever Harper Collins, uh, like middle grade graphic novel imprint is going to be called, um, probably summer of 2021, I think. So it's still kind of a long ways off, even though like I just finished final art and I'm turning in the files today. It's like, oh, I have to wait like more than a year to see this book, but it's coming. It's going to be great. I'm really proud of it. If you like watercolor, you'll love it because all the pages were hand watercolored by me and uh, it was a really fun adventure. That's very exciting. Uh, I love Cullen's work too. Of course, we have Harrow County and things like that at Dark Horse. So that's super exciting. Definitely look out for that. Um, everybody who is with us. And with that, I will let you all head out and enjoy the rest of your day. Um, again, if you are creating your own PVZ art and would like to share it, please do tag us and we'll be sharing some more on social media later today. And uh, look for Ron and Kat to be posting this art online later too. 
thank you again so much for joining us, everybody. And uh, stay home, stay safe, and hopefully uh, you enjoy some of these Plants vs. Zombies comics. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Right, thanks everyone.